welcome into the studio. It's time for the cut to 53. I'm Lindsay Draper, joined by the very talented men of DallasCowboys.com, David Hellman, Rob Phillips, Brian Broaddus. What we've come up with here is our list of guys that we think are going to make this team based on what we think the Cowboys are going to do. So let's get into it first by just giving an overview of the locks that we think are guarantees for this team, starting with the offense, guys. When we take a look at this, we're counting Zeke, right? Right. For the time being, yeah, yes. Sure, I mean, sure. yes. That's a whole nother conversation, but right now, yeah. Also want to point out Noah Brown on here. You guys kind of talk about what the, the PUP guys and IR will look like. We all agreed Noah would probably be on this team if he was healthy right now, yes? Yes, I think so, yeah. But he started camp on PUP, so he can stay on PUP, which makes him unavailable for six weeks. He doesn't count toward the roster, so they basically don't have to do anything with them right now. And when we take a look at the defense and the locks there, it's the same story for both Robert Quinn and Luke Gifford. Luke Gifford's interesting because we saw one game of him in preseason, but I think he's played his way onto this roster even though he's injured right now. Another surprise maybe on here, not now, but Donovan Wilson we have as a lock. Yeah, I think he's played his way on this team. I think he's there's too many range plays, too many times where he's made plays on the ball. Young guy, I think that's always a, a you know, they'll keep their guys they draft. He really had a shot at two interceptions the other night against yeah. Houston. Like you said, strong safety was his label, but really playing with more range than that. Yep. Now take a look at what we have left. We've got 10 spots to fill. Here are all of our names here on the bottom. So what we're going to do is reveal you guys explain why you think Joe Jackson is on this team. I know Jerry Jones was mentioning him during you training camp. You just settled it right there. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. enough, right? If the owner of the team keeps shouting you out as a guy who's having a great camp, who are we to argue? Yeah, this guy's got some flexibility. I think he could play that right in for you, though, and he also can play some under tackles, so they like those types of guys. Box number two. This one is important because we kind of went round and round with how deep they're going to go with the offensive line. You guys think this is a necessity? I do because Suofilo has started games for them last year and Zach Martin's back injury, although they're optimistic for week one for Zach, that's insurance, veteran insurance there at guard. Playing right guard for the first time in his career while Zach is out with this back injury. He's a veteran, he's versatile, he can play both guard spots. I just think it makes too much sense. But something against him is he doesn't play center. True. And that's something they kind of always look at, again, those versatile players. Now, when we have this next pick, this kind of makes me think, how much weight do these preseason games carry for you guys and the performances that you make? Yeah, I think that they feel better now about his cover ability. I, I, you got a pick the other night? Well, because you got a pick, but they actually showed some range on yeah. the play. I mean, you watch him play in the, in the, in the practices and the games. There's some things where he didn't cover very well. Last week, he actually showed he could cover a little bit. I think that makes him feel better about his spot. I think his special teams alone puts him in the conversation, though, because when he got hurt last year, that was a blow to their special teams contributions. What about this next guy? Do you uh, obviously you feel the same way about Justin March? I think it's one of those things where if you're a fringe bubble guy, it's the more you can do. I think Justin March, he can play three spots on defense if you need him to. He's a special teams guy down the line linebackers you got to be able to fill a lot of roles I see a little bit of everything yeah Dave's got him right the wide receiver conversation we're finally here the direction you guys think that this team is going at receiver my guy Devin Smith oh he's your guy it was a camp story turned into a big possibility for me absolutely he's the perfect example of preseason games and down the stretch in practice you can't ignore what he's done and, and I think people forget he was a second round draft pick in 2015 and he's playing like it now that he's healthy. Two knee injuries removed, now he's playing. I think he's finally healthy. His attitude about it is different the way he's going about his job. He's earned a ride on this team. We didn't talk about him at all coming out of oh. OTAs. He, he was an afterthought. On. He was he, an afterthought for the first 10 yeah. days of camp. Absolutely. He came on Absolutely. really strong. Yep. In games and in practice. Yep. Guys, talk to me about Chris Covington and why we decided to go this way. I know we went back and forth on this one. I think this is a really deep group, the linebackers. And so you talk about Justin March, Chris Covington. Coaches tend to go with guys they feel comfortable with. I think they feel comfortable with Chris Covington right now. What he could do on special teams. They haven't been able to have to play him very much, but I think if they put him in the game, they have an idea of how he would play. When you talk about players that can, again, the more you can do, right. this coaching staff just seems to love linebackers. They, do. they always keep six. They have occasionally kept seven. Again, Covington, he can play some Sam linebacker. He's on special teams. Right. He just wears a lot of hats, and I think that's important. All right, as we get closer, we got four spots to go. When it comes to the secondary, there's a – you safeties and cornerbacks left if you take a look at those names, but who you guys went with here 
Darian Thompson. Why'd you do this? Well, me personally, though, I, I feel like, though, that the coaches look at him as that smart guy. He lines everybody up. Now, if you watch his play, it's just been pretty flat. But for them, they're thinking, oh, smart guy, line everybody up, veteran. You know, they're going with some young guys back there at safety. When you look at some of the backups, you know, if you talk, you talk about Wilson being a backup right there, they're going to go with a veteran guy that can play as a free. And I think that's why they're going with Thompson. Consistency, veteran guy, that always makes coaches feel a little bit better, especially the back end of the roster. Running back position. This is crazy to me. We've, okay, Alfred Morris, Darius Jackson, Mike Weber, and Jordan Chun. The back and forth stops now because you've gone with Jordan Chun for this team. And it seems like throughout training camp, Dave, did you latch on here? Now, honestly, I, we sat, you know, we've had 10 meetings about this over, and I was surprised <laughs> the first time. And then, you, again, you see what he does on special teams. You think about the fact that Alfred Morris is a vested veteran. So, one, if they release Alfred Morris, he's not subject to waiver claims. They also don't have to guarantee his salary for the if, if he's not on the roster. If he is on the roster, they do. Right. That It's that type of stuff. So that's the plan, you think, for Alfred Morris maybe end up back here. Yes, I do. This, this goes back to the Zeke thing. Well, they did. You know, yeah. And, and yeah, and this is under the impression that Zeke is here. Right, right, right. And, right. And Morris is brought in in camp, early in camp, right. when Zeke's not there as Somewhat of an insurance policy. Zeke, Pollard, and Chun is a three good is three good combination, three players. But you would agree with me. So, and for the record, if Zeke doesn't show up, he doesn't count toward the roster. Right. If that is, if that were to happen, you're probably saying Morris, Pollard, Chun. Yeah, but I bet you they still do something with Alfred Morris. They did it a couple years ago with Kellen Moore. You, yeah. you wave a vested veteran, Bring him you back. know he's coming back. It saves your roster spot. Get ready. They're doing it with Alfred I, Morris. I think Alfred Morris will be back here. He's just not going to technically right. be on the 50. Right. All right. Our ninth spot goes to a player who, where we all said and can see out the window on the practice field, he's out there all summer by himself, putting in as much work as he possibly can. Donovan Alumba making this team? Well, this is because I think of Chris Richard, and I think because of the length. We, we've seen this guy make plays. He knows his shortcomings. He knows he's not the quickest guy. He knows he's not the fastest guy. But I think they're going to carry six cornerbacks. I really do. And I think Alumba is the last guy on that list right there because of his length, because of his ability to make plays. He's knocked down a ton of balls this summer. What I love about this guy is he will tell you I'm not the most athletic right. guy. How many pro athletes say that publicly? True. He says the game's played from the neck up. Richard loves that. He's a smart football player, and that's what coaches like, even though he's young and unproven. Do you worry that they'll try to protect their draft class? Mike Jackson, obviously, he's a rookie. Mike Jackson hasn't shown me enough. He hasn't been. He's been injured. If, if you're taking the best 53 guys, Mike Jackson's not on this list. Mike White is still here, I'm noticing. Yeah. There is. Is he going to be in our last spot? Mm. Let's find out. We Let's might have find to find out. out and discuss Cedric Wilson mm. Jr. Brian, you like this. I do. And, you know, I, I think this could go a bunch of different ways, though. Cedric, if they go six wide receivers, guys, Cedric Wilson's on this team. Me personally, I have Cedric Wilson over Devin Smith, me personally. But I understand what they're going to do. If they go five, maybe Cedric Wilson up. He could return punts. They're playing both these guys. And look at him also on kickoffs as well. That might be a possibly why he's on this football team. Are you sold that they will keep six wide receivers? I'm not necessarily sold. I'm, I'm not, not either because you could go long at, like, defensive line, offensive line. Yeah. But he's it's the same thing as Devin Smith. He's just played too well. Yeah. Like right. Brian said, punt return the other night, plays any re receiver position you need. Productive young player. I'd keep them both, which, I mean, they're on the list. Sure. Yeah. Obviously. sure. We roll them with two quarterbacks and Taryn Christian on the practice squad? Probably what they're going to do. I think you might be Looking. able to get – you could get Mike White on the practice squad too, yeah. but I just haven't seen anything that – Depends on the college reports. The Somebody might have had a good college grade on Mike White that they were thinking about drafting him later, yeah. and he might just get claimed. All right, guys, here is our bubble list of the 10 final players. Great work from the guys on DallasCowboys.com. Keep it locked there for all of the latest news. And as we get closer and closer to the Tampa Bay game on Thursday.